Hola clase! Today we're going to talk about subject pronouns and the verb ser. You can find this on page 37 of your textbook or it's in Unidad 1, Lección 1. Um, and you can look it up in your textbook or you can just take the notes as we go along. So, what is a subject pronoun? Well, we know a noun is a person, place, or thing. A pronoun takes place of a noun. So you're thinking of, like, instead of saying, Miss Baker gets out of the bed, Miss Baker brushes her teeth, Miss Baker washes her face, I, because I am Miss Baker, I say I. I got out of the bed, I brush my teeth, I wash my face. Um, if you were talking about someone else, though, you would use, say, she, he or she, right? So your subject pronouns, I would like you to draw this chart. So you need a line down the middle and two going, uh, two going across, line down the middle, two across, forming six squares. Now you need to do it in chart form because this chart here is going to be very familiar to you later on. And you need to get to the point of memorizing these subject pronouns. So in your first square, your first little box, I actually call them houses. So this first little house, your first subject pronoun is yo. So repite, yo. Now some people say yo, so and that's fine too, but we're just going to say yo, and it means I. In your second square, or your second house, you need to write the subject pronoun tu. And tu means you, and it is informal, and we had talked about that before, tu versus usted, or tu versus usted. So, clase repite, tu. Muy bien. In your bottom house, right here, bottom left, you have el, ella, and usted. So you have three subjects in this bottom box. El, I think of it as he's wearing a hat, and it means he. Ella, I think of the name Ella, or the name Bella, and it means she, so it's feminine. And usted, abbreviated UD, so you say this ood, not, I'm sorry, you say it usted, not ood. And it means you formal. Now, everything to the left of this line, so boxes 1, 2, and 3, are all singular pronouns. So you can always 50-50 it by just thinking, okay, is it singular or is it plural? So 1, 2, and 3 are all singular. Now we're going to go over 4, 5, and 6. And on the right-hand side, this is all of your verbs that are plural. I'm not verbs, I'm sorry. All of your pronouns that are plural. So, number four, you have nosotros. Nosotros means we. So, a really long word in Spanish, really short word in English. But nosotros means we. Additionally, in this box right here, I like to put a blank e yo. Blank e yo just means it can be, you can name a million and two people. But if you put this little e yo tag on it, it means and I. So that would include myself, which would mean we. So if I said, Bob, Luisa, Juan, and I, we went to the store. It would be up here in this fourth box or fourth house. Your fifth house is a special house. It is vosotros. It looks a lot like nosotros, except it means something completely different. It actually means you all or y'all. It is the plural form of you. Now, this one is only used in Spain. I don't ever use vosotros when I speak, but you need to be familiar with it because your Spanish tea teacher might use vosotros, or you might see one or two questions on your final exam about vosotros. Now, so if I don't use vosotros, what do I use? I use this, this bottom thing down here, the sixth house, all right, or the sixth box. I use ustedes. If you see that ustedes, which is the plural form of usted, Ustedes means you all as well. So I actually use ustedes versus vosotros. So even though vosotros sounds like nosotros, it means y'all. It doesn't mean we. And even though we know vosotros here and you've been introduced to it, your default y'all or you all would be ustedes down here. And it's abbreviated UDS. Now additional down here in this bottom box, you have ellos and you have ellas. Notice that the double L's make a Y sound. It's not ellos and it's not ellas, right? It's ellos and ellas or ellos and ellas, right? You can hear people have a J sound with it. 
And Agios is your default they. It means they. It can be all boys or it could be co-ed. You could have 1,000 girls, but if you put in one boy, it would default back to Agios. Now, if they're all girls, if you're referring to they're eating pizza and you're pointing and they're all girls, you can say a yes, a yes. So, repite, yo, tu, el, ella, usted, nosotros, blank y yo, vosotros, ellos, ellas, ustedes. Muy bien, let's see if you can do it with me instead of repeating after me. Here we go. Yo, tu, el, ella, usted, nosotros, blank y yo, vosotros, ellos, ellas, ustedes. All right, let's do a pra practice with subject pronouns. Example, if I give you my dad, I want you to think, okay, my dad. My dad is only one person, so I have to be on the left-hand side. It has to be in either box one, two, or three. Now, it can't be in box one, because that would be I. I am not my dad. It can't be box number two, because you are not my dad. So automatically, by process of elimination, you're going to be in the bottom third box. All right? Now, looking in there, looking at your subject pronouns, you have el, ella, and usted. My dad, if I'm referring to my dad, if I said my dad loves to play soccer, which is a true story, I would say L. L would be he. He likes to play soccer. So instead of saying my dad, the subject pronoun would be he. All right, so let's look at these. Number one, Roberto. Roberto. What would be the subject pronoun for Roberto? Number two. You and I, if I said you and I are going to the movies, you and I, to so think, what would you and I be? What would be my subject pronoun for that? Number three, mis amigos, mis amigos. So mis amigos, regardless of whether you know what it means in Spanish or not, you can look at those S's and you know that it's multiple people. And knowing that it's multiple people, you defaulted to number four, five, or six. So tell me which one of those boxes and also think about what is my subject pronoun for mis amigos. Numero cuatro. If I said I love pizza, what would be my subject pronoun in this sentence? I love pizza. But you have to tell me in español. I love pizza. And the last one, number five, if I say, do you like sports? And we knew each other, which would be my subject pronoun in Spanish? Okay, great. Let's check your answers. All right, we said my dad was L. My mom is ella. Actually, I think I messed these up. You and I are nosotros. Mis amigos is ellos. I love pizza would be yo. And number five, do you like sports would be two. Now that I'm looking at my PowerPoint, I think your number one said Roberto, not my mom. Um, and Roberto would also be L, like my dad. So sorry, I kind of messed up on this. Hopefully you got all those right. All right, let's move on. We talked about the verb ser today. The verb ser means to be. In Spanish, a verb has different forms to tell you who the subject is. Changing a ver verb form so that it matches its subject is called conjugating. Now, you can actually conjugate in English as well. So let's look at some examples. In English, you must change the verb to be to be sub subject specific as well. So I don't say I be, you be, he or she, it be, right? We be. We don't talk like that. So it actually changes to be subject specific. So in English, to be would actually be I am. So it changes to match I. You are, he or she is, we are, y'all are, and they are. 
So these are the forms of to be in English. Notice that be isn't in there at all. Like it completely changed to completely new word as I matched it up with my subject. So the same thing happens in Spanish and that's when it's called conjugating. So here are the verb, I'm sorry, here are the forms of the verb ser. The first one, yo, what matches with yo is soy. Yo soy means I am. I am. Yo soy. Two. Tu eres. So eres is the form of ser for two. Tu eres. And tu eres means you are. Notice that in my bottom left hand box you have L, ella, and usted. And for all three of these you would use S. L, S, ella, S, and usted, S, which means he is, she is, usted would be you, and then it would translate, I guess, to R, but you would use S with L, ella, and usted. For your fourth house, you have nosotros, nosotros somos, so somos is the verb ser in the nosotros form. That would mean we are, nosotros somos. Also, if you had blank ego, you would match it up with somos. For vosotros, it's sois. It's kind of like soy sauce. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. But sois is your vosotros. And it means y'all are or you all are. Now in your bottom right hand box, you have three subjects. Ellos, ellas, and ustedes. And for all of these, it would be son. It's not son. It's not like, come here, son. All right, it's son. So you have ellos son, ellas son, and ustedes son. They are, you all are. So let's review the forms of the verb ser. You have soy, eres, es, somos, sois, son. I am, you are, he, she, is. Nosotros would be we are. Vosotros, y'all are, and then they are. So, soy, eres, es, somos, sois, son. Right. Ser, you use ser also to tell where someone or something is from. Remember when we had our quiz and it said, De donde eres? Where are you from? And you'd answer back with soy de Ecuador or soy de Mexico, right? To tell where you're from. So you use it in day. For example, tú eres de Nicaragua. You are from Nicaragua. They means from. Ellas son de Costa Rica. The girls or they are from Costa Rica. To make a sentence negative, you place the word no directly in front of the verb. So, mi profesora no es de Cuba. My teacher is not from Cuba. So, notice I don't say es no de Cuba. It's no es de Cuba. All right? Even though it translates to is not from. Also, you say es de España. Instead of that, you would say no es de España. He or she is not from Spain. All right, so let's review. Let's see how you guys do. So you have yo soy, tu eres, el, ella, usted, es, nosotros somos, vosotros sois, ellos, ellas, ustedes son. Soy, eres, es, somos, sois, son. Soy, eres, es, somos, sois, son.